Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome to the Grand Ole Opry. Now the Grand Ole Opry isn't actually a place. The Grand Ole Opry is a show. This is in fact the Grand Ole Opry house. Now the Grand Ole Opry was started in 1925, making this its in November its 91st year of operation. It's a weekly radio show that's the longest running radio show in the world. And it is the show that made country music famous. And along with it, Nashville, Tennessee. We are here in the heart of Nashville in what was originally Opryland, built in the 1970s. Now Opryland has since been demolished and a mall has been put in its place, but the Opry House remains. Now, the Grand Old Opry started in the 1920s in Ryman Theater in downtown Nashville. With its success and its growth and whatnot, they decided in the 19, early 1970s to build Opryland and to move it out here. Well, by the 1990s, that sort of fell by the wayside. The park was demolished, the Opry House remains, and the performances continue to happen here at the Opry House most of the year. To my understanding, I don't know if this is still true, but for three months of the year, in the winter, they are returned to Ryman Theater in downtown Nashville. Now, you can see behind me here these huge guitars, these iconic symbols of, of country music. And a lot of very, very famous people, Dolly Parton, Johnny Cash, uh, Hank Williams, performed here. Now, membership, and I'm not quite sure how you become a member, I'm sure it's by invitation only, in the Opry is considered the crowning achievement in country music. If you are a member of the Opry, you have hit the pinnacle of success. You are now a superstar in country music. Now, interestingly enough, in 1954, I believe, a teenage Elvis Presley performed here his only time. And the crowd was polite, and after the performance, the owner, head of the Opry, took Presley's manager aside and told him, yeah, he's just not really right. His style isn't right for the Opry. So it was the only time that Presley ever performed here, although considered one of the biggest icons of country music in the 60s, that there, there ever were. So, you know, success is a kind of a, a tenuous thing. Sometimes people are there, there. He was, you know, very, um, Presley's style was, was very provocative in its day. By today's standards, it seems very benign. But in its day, it was, uh, you know, very shocking. So the Opry has, has tended over the years to promote very traditional country styles. Now that is changing, I think. That's a personal opinion, by the way. As country music becomes more widespread and more varied. So the Grand Old Opry House, one of the two venues, if you will, that hosts the Grand Old Opry, has in more recent years hosted Dolly Parton, Reba McIntyre, Carrie Underwood, Garth Brooks, many big names that are known today, very current artists, and this is a 4,000 seat auditorium. So a pretty good size auditorium, not huge by, you know, I suppose by auditorium standards, but certainly a very large auditorium. Now induction into the hall is they don't just pass out invitations. Um, it's, it's based on career accomplishments, but it's based as much or more on commitment on a artist commitment to the art form, to country music. But, you know, basically it's, do they like you? <laughs> and if they, if they feel something about you, that is how you get invited to join the Opry. Now, back in the 1950s, a show by the name of Stars of the Grand Ole Opry became the very first television show ever to be filmed in color. 
Now, obviously, they'd been filming the movies, large budget motion pictures in color for many years, since the 19, what, 30s. But this became the first television show to be filmed in color. I thought that was kind of an interesting fact. Sort of a bit of trivia for you. Now in 2010, the Grand Old Opry House was actually flooded when the banks of the nearby river over, overflowed um, and repairs were started immediately. Interestingly enough, the show must go on and so Operations were not interrupted. They were able to move operations to alternate venues, including the Ryman Theater downtown, and continue operations without dropping a beat. Now, when the flood came, much of the main floor and the stage area was underwater. And this was a real problem because there was a, a large piece of inlaid wood that was taken from the Ryman Theater and was brought here. This is, it's a sort of a, you know, an, an iconic sort of a thing. Well, it was one of the things that wasn't torn out and destroyed and, and, and replaced and refurbished. It, w it was refurbished and replaced in the center of the Grand Old Opry House stage. So it was, it, the tradition, I guess, was, was maintained over time. So this beautiful piece of inlaid wood that's in the middle of the stage, if you ever get a chance to, a shot to see that, and I don't think we're going to get to show you that today, is from the original Ryman Theater from when the Grand Old Opry started. Now, with induction into the Opry as a member, there comes a certain obligation. You are expected to perform here at the Opry House with some regularity. I don't know if there is a, you know, a specific number of times per year or how often, but there is an expectation, whether written or not, to perform here. So there, there's some obligation involved in that. But that also means that if you come here to the Grand Ole Opry, there's going to be an expectation that with some frequency, you're going to be able to see some big name acts. Um, not just necessarily, you know, uh, up and comers, but you're gonna to get to see some well-established and large uh, stars. So, I mean, that, that works out nicely, of course, for the audience, for the, for the fans. And I don't think it's too big a price to pay for the performers for induction into the Grand Ole Opry. So if you come here to the Grand Ole Opry House here in Nashville, you're gonna find this beautiful sign with a kiosk that tells you about the Grand Ole Opry House and about their store. And it will have a list of performers. And as I said, amongst these, some of them I don't know, but if certainly Lee Greenwood is gonna be performing here this week. That's a big, big name in country music. So they change this every week, of course, for the performers that are going to be there for that week. And they have stayed current with the times, by the way, folks. You'll see here all these icons, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Google, YouTube, and Tumblr. So they are very much a part of the 21st century here at the Grand Ole Opry. And I, I don't know, sometimes when I think of country music, I do think of the traditional country music. And I think of the times in the, in the 50s and 60s, 70s even. But no, country music is evolving and certainly they are staying current with the times. So come on down, y'all, and visit the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. I hope you enjoyed this short visit to the Grand Ole Opry House here in Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, if you got questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you haven't already, pick subscribe. Come along for the adventure. We've got lots more to show you. And as always, thank you for watching.